God doesn't just save us, deliver us, rescue us, and heal us so the, to make us happy. No, ultimately, he wants the glory. If he pulls some of us, us, us out too soon, you might think that it was your own might, your own strength, your own money, maybe your own education or friends. And therefore, God says, I'm going to let them get into a position where they run out of their experience and resources. Then I will save them. Let me see if I can make it more, more plain. Uh, my wife, who used to be a, a lifeguard, she told me that the best way to save someone is to wait till they stop fighting the water. Otherwise, if you try to save them while they're fighting the water, they may drown you by pushing you down, trying to keep themselves up. When I was a senior in high school, it was one of these hot days like we've experienced last week, you know, 90 degrees. And so a couple of my buddies from the football team, we decided we were going to go to another friend's apartment complex and go swimming. So the swimming pool was not that big. There was a nine feet and a four foot in, and it was very short distance across. So we were pushing off the edge, seeing how far our, our momentum would take us across. And then we would swim the rest of the way. One of uh, my buddies, he could not swim but they convinced him that he could make it across. So he pushes off and he starts out really well. He gets about halfway and he goes underneath the water. After a couple seconds, I see that he's not coming up. I jump in the water and I go to the bottom to lift him up. And I mean, this guy is 6'2", 240 pounds. So I go and I lift him up and I'm in the water and we come above and I'm swimming to the edge and we're about two to three feet from the side and all of a sudden he starts panicking. He starts fighting and next thing you know he pushes me down to lift himself up to grab the side and I'm now looking at him from underneath the water saying, I'm the reason that you got here. I'm the one who saved you. Now you're pushing me down to lift yourself up. Let me see if I can help somebody. God's got to wait till you stop fighting so that when you get there that you won't say, well, if I hadn't went to the best school or perhaps if I had not had this job or maybe if I didn't have some money saved up, oh, Lord God, he wants you to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. There's positioning in your waiting. But also, there's straining. There's a straining process that takes place in your waiting. In verse 48 in the NIV, it says that they were straining at the oars. This straining here, the Greek word is bazanizo, which means to be tortured or harassed. This, this, this tortured or harassed here um, has to do with the same, uh, it's related to the same torture that happens when torturing uh, gold with fire in the smelting process. The smelting process was when gold was thrown into the fire uh, to burn off impurities, things that the gold used to carry around that didn't do anything but weigh it down and hurt its value. I believe that it's safe to say that some of us in here have been going through what feels like a smelting process. You feel like you've been in the fire, that you've been tortured, that you've been harassed, that you've been hurt, and that you've been in pain waiting on God to rescue you. But sometimes the only way that God can uh, uh, get some things out of us is that he's got to allow us to go through this pain and this torture because it's necessary in the process. In order for, for God to uh, get some stuff out of us that's from our past, that's been weighing us down and keeping us from being a valuable asset to the kingdom, God's got to allow us to experience some pain. Let me see if I can help some of you. Um, my, my wife, my wife, when we were engaged, she used to experience these, these pains. And every once in a while, I mean, the pains would be so severe that she couldn't do anything. You know, she couldn't um, enjoy life. She didn't want to go out. She didn't want to leave the house. Only thing she wanted to do was lay down. So as it progressed, she went to the doctor, and the doctor said that they have to perform surgery. On the day of the surgery, uh, my father-in-law and Brittany were all in this conference room talking to the doctor. 
And I said, doctor, are you sure that she has to have surgery? And the doctor told us that the only way for Robin to enjoy a full life and not be slowed or weighed down by this disease is that we need to cut into her and pull out the stuff that's been causing her pain. She said she will experience some temporary pain from the surgery and she will have a scar, but she will not suffer from the same stuff that she had been suffering from before she went into the surgery. Sometimes the only way that God can get some stuff out of us that's been keeping us from totally giving ourselves to him and enjoying a blessed life is that he's got to perform surgery on some of us. He's got to allow us to go through some pain to get that stuff that's been holding us back. That stuff in your past, past hurts and past mistakes and past disappointments because it, ain't, it hasn't been doing anything but weighing you down. God wants to free you from it. Look at somebody and say, I've got to go through the straining process. So there is positioning, there's a straining process, and then there is revelation in your waiting. In verse 50 it says, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. I said earlier that people were questioning Jesus' identity. Even the disciples weren't sure who he was. How do I know that? Because when he fed the 5,000, they were trying to figure out how did he do this. When he showed up on the water, they, they thought he was a ghost. If they had known the true identity of Jesus, they never would have been surprised when he showed up. In fact, they would have expected Jesus to show up in a miraculous way. Jesus' identity is revealed when he speaks to the disciples, comforting them, saying, It is I. <laughs> the Greek translation of it is I is ego imai. And it is identical with God's self-disclosure to Moses on the backside of the mountain when Moses said, Who shall I say sent me? And he said, Tell him I am that I am. Therefore, the better translation for it is I, is I am that I am. Somebody should have jumped to their feet and shouted hallelujah right there because Jesus was saying, be of good cheer, I am God. Somebody came here discouraged because it seems like they've been struggling, toiling, and waiting for a long time. God sent me here to tell you to be encouraged. That no matter how long you've been waiting, no matter what you've experienced in your waiting, when God shows up, he's going to show out. You've been waiting on a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask or think. He's a God who can do anything but fail. You can try to depend on your friends, but I guarantee your friends will let you down. You could try to depend on your money, but I guarantee your money will get funny and run out on you. You could try to depend on your spouse, but I guarantee your spouse will disappoint you. Oh, Lord. But if you try God, somebody said that he may not come when you want him, but that he's always on time. So as I take my seat, I just want to take a minute to help you get reacquainted with whom you've been waiting on. He's the same God that fireproofed the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. I said he's the same God that tamed the lions in the lion den with Daniel. I said he's the same God that gave David a slingshot and allowed him to take down a lion with one smooth stone. I said he's the same God, yeah, that came down 40 in two generations, reincarnated in Jesus. He's the same Jesus that healed the woman with the issue of blood with just one touch of the hem of his garment. I said he's the same Jesus that brought life to Lazarus' dead situation. 
and he's still able. I said he's still able today. He's still able to fix marriages. I said he's still able. I still able to heal your body. I said he's still able. Still able to put food on your table. He's still able to fix whatever it is that you're going through. I said you ask me. show out. Look at somebody say he's still able. I said he's still able. 